Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where in the world you are joining us from today. Thank you for spending this time with us today for this wonderful alumni spotlight event that we have for the Negotiation and Conflict Resolution Program here at Columbia University. My name is Suzanne Wolfinger. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Admissions at the School of Professional Studies, and I am your main point person with any questions you might have about an application to the program. So please take a moment to introduce yourselves. Um, actually, the Q&A is open for you um, if you would like to make any comments or ask any questions throughout the session. So we do encourage you to use the Q&A. We will do our best to answer your questions throughout the session. And so without further delay, let's get started with this alumni spotlight event. I would like to introduce to you Daniel Medina, who is going to introduce to you our speakers. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you very much. My name is Daniel Medina. I'm a recent graduate of the Negotiation and Conflict Resolution Master's Program here at Columbia University. And it's a pleasure to welcome you all to this conversation with Winston Utomo, CEO of ID in Media. Winston, it's uh, great to welcome you back to Columbia. I want to introduce our key speakers with some brief remarks. Winston Utomo is the founder of CEO and CEO of IDN Media, the leading media platform company for millennial and Gen Z in Indonesia with over 80 million monthly active users across its platforms. Prior to joining IDN Media, Wilson worked at Google in Singapore and San John's Capital in San Francisco. He graduated from the University of Southern California, Los Angeles with his bachelor's degree and from Columbia University with his master's degree here in negotiation and conflict resolution. Also with us today is Diana Pineda, who is an accomplished attorney with over 13 years of experience in energy matters, oil and gas projects, litigation and dispute resolution. She's a partner at Gonzalez Calvillo, one of the Mexico largest firms, focusing her legal practice in development of oil and gas projects in Mexico. Before focusing her practice on energy and oil and gas, Diana spent five years in litigation and dispute resolution of commercial, administrative, and constitutional matters. She's also a diversity, equity, and inclusion activist and alumna of the NECR program class of 2014. Cody Smith will also be moderating the conversation with Diana. He's, the facu he's a faculty in the NECR program here at Columbia and a negotiation strategist with the Experimental Negotiation Initiative supporting track one peace efforts all around the world. Before this, Cody worked for five years as research associate in the negotiation organizations and market unit at Harvard Business School. He holds a graduate degree from the University of Heidelberg, and he's also an alumni of Columbia University Master of Science in Negotiation and Conflict Resolution. This conversation today will be divided into two main sections. First, our key speakers will explore Wilson Utomo's extraordinary journey from the NECR program to his current role as founder and CEO of IDN Media. And then we will open a Q&A session for you, the participants. With that, I will be handing things to our Cody to get us started. Thank you very much and please enjoy. Thank you, Daniel. And welcome to everyone joining us today. Um, it is, it is a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Winston, and you, Diana. We all went to class together back in 2014, so it's, it's nice to have this moment together again. Um, as Daniel mentioned, we'll be using a Q&A session. So after our discussion, if you want to put those in there, we'll get to them when we can. Um, with that, Winston, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, to help get us started in your own words, could you give us a high level introduction of who you are, where you're located, and tell us a little bit about IDN Media? Hi, Cody. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, Diana. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Daniel, for the introduction as well. So, hi, everyone. My name is Winston Utomo, uh, born and raised in Indonesia. Uh, I'm from Surabaya, uh, not the capital city. That's why I have a very thick accent uh, of the way we speak. And then, uh, I grew up in Surabaya. I moved to the States for my education. Uh, I got the opportunity to went to USC for my undergrad and I went to this amazing program, NECR in Columbia University for my master. Then I 
I went to Google in Singapore uh, to learn about media, to learn about advertising technology, and then I uh, started Idean Media with my brother William back in 2014. So a bit context about Idean Media. Idean Media is the leading media platform company in Indonesia. We have over 80 million uh, monthly active users in our ecosystem. We divide our business category into four: uh, digital media, commercial, entertainment, and content platform. So we have services from uh, online advertising, creator, uh, to live streaming platform, uh, our own social media, uh, uh, blockchain tournament platform, film production, and many other uh, businesses in the ecosystem. Uh, a bit context into the business. Uh, we are 700 people team, uh, mostly based in, uh, all, everyone based in Indonesia actually. Uh, 600 of them based in the capital city, Jakarta, where I am right now. Uh, from the uh, financial uh, phase, uh, we are a Series D company. We've been fortunate. Uh, we have raised a five financing round. Uh, we've been profitable for the past four years. Uh, still many long roads ahead, uh, but we are very excited uh, to be here. And a bit context about Indonesia, uh, because maybe some of you are not familiar. Uh, we are 270 million people, country. Uh, we are still not a big in terms of the economy. Our GDP per capita is around 4,000 US dollar. Uh, the government has targeted to 25 to 30,000 uh, GDP per capita by in the next 20 years. Uh, we are we have a lot of middle class, especially rising middle class. Internet penetration 70 to 75 percent, uh, mostly still middle and uh, below middle class uh, as the major majority of the population. Uh, but many predicted that Indonesia will become the fourth biggest uh, economy uh, in the next 20 years. That's why uh, I am in Idean Media and building this together. Hopefully in my lifetime, I can see Indonesia become a high income country or a big country. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Koti. Thank you. And uh, Diana, if you want to ask your uh, question for, for Winston, and then we'll alternate back and forth as we go along. Sure. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us, uh, wherever you are in the world, either New York, Indonesia, Mexico, or elsewhere. Um, and I want to go back to the beginning, Winston, because when we're choosing a grad degree, we always wonder in what ways Will such degree change our lives, our professions, our future from what we have the moment prior to going back to school? So Winston, could you share one or more lessons that you learned from the NECR program that have helped you prepare for success as an entrepreneur and CEO? Yes, thank you, Diana, for the question. So maybe a flashback a little bit. So back in 2000 and 12, 2013, so uh, I was working with this company and I'm looking for the next uh, for my career right, and my life. Uh, my undergrad is business school, so I know I want to learn something new, something that uh, I don't get exposure during my undergrad and during my work. And then I browsed through this, uh, I browsed through Google and then I found this program in the, in the internet. And then the deadline actually has almost passed uh, and I, I called the admission, I emailed the admission, I called, uh, I called so many people. I, I, I make trouble a lot in the admission process, uh, but they are very helpful back then. And long story short, I got accepted into the program and I moved to New York to attend the program. And to be honest, uh, the whole time, my time in, in the program, uh, probably not to exaggerate, it probably one of the best decision in my life. And not because this is a Columbia or an ECR program, but this is from my true experience. Many things that I learned that I didn't get even in my undergrad or any of my experience, things like emotional intelligence, uh, having, having self-awareness, how to do conflict resolution well, how to have a win-win mindset. Uh, this kind of thing are very important, not only in business, but also in life. For example, negotiation, we negotiate every day. I negotiate every day with my wife, what to eat, what to do, anything, right? In the business, especially, we negotiate every day. Every day we, we encounter conflict. So how to figure out what is the best solution for this conflict, how to make it a win-win for everyone. Uh, 
I think I cannot emphasize enough how good this program. Uh, and my intention when I attended this program, Diana, is I want to learn as many as possible. So whatever the professor gave us assignment, I try to read a lot of books, read more than what they required because for me, I genuinely want to learn. And to be honest, right now I become very passionate and many of my readings, my, my, my focus in the work uh, mainly related with, with this program. And I also referred many of my friends, uh, my brother's wife attended this program, I think two years after me. Uh, I referred two of my friends as well. So I think if I have a referral bonus program, I can get <laughs> a few. So, and I will keep recommending this program to many people because I, I found uh, the benefit of it. And to be honest, without this program, uh, there will be no IDN media as well. That is, that's fantastic to hear. And I, I could definitely share uh, some experience with, with having to bother the admissions team. So to you, Suzanne, who just introduced us at the beginning, uh, apologies for sending all these people to you. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Uh, and it is, it is really interesting that how you, how you do discuss negotiation and conflict resolution are just factors in everyday life. We, we deal with it all the time, whether it's at an interpersonal level with a family member, you happen to have a family business, so I'm sure it's even a, it has multiple layers for you, Winston, um, but all the way up to an international um, conflict scale. So it is, it is interesting to me when I was looking into your company, some, you, you do seem to put a lot of these skills that we learn in the program around collaboration into the actual culture of your company. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what this concept of a Timmy is and what, how you came up with it as a model and maybe just a few words about why Timmy's are important to your business? Yes, uh, thank you, Cody. Maybe for those uh, who don't understand the context, uh, we call its other uh, Timmy. So we don't use the word employee. We call, uh, we just use Timmy as the the other words for colleague or, or team members. Yeah, uh, maybe about my passion. Actually, my passion is in HR uh, or people operation. Uh, for me, I think people is at the, the most fundamental thing of every organization because we have a principle here in IDN. If we take care of the people, uh, everything else will follow, right? Uh, and people starts from the team member because in the end, uh, who make the content is our team, uh, who find the revenue is our team, uh, who do the expansion, who do all the strategy is our team, right? So if the team are not happy, are not satisfied, cannot work well, cannot work productively, then there is no output can be achieved for the organization. And for me and culture, uh, the simple word for me is culture is not what you say you're going to do. It's not what in the Google slides is what, what you actually do, right? And as the leader is what you do, people will see. And that's why we have to lead by example and become a good role model. Uh, to give you an example, 40% of my time right now is related to uh, people operation or HR uh, for like pricing of our ad product expansion and anything else. I leave it to the team. I know uh, they will make a good decision, but usually I will intervene about hiring decision, uh, setting up SOP. For example, we just implemented a hybrid working uh, today and I put a lot of my effort and time in, uh, in doing it because I know my job is not to make all the decision, but to create a psychologically safe workplace uh, for people to be able to work uh, productively. Yeah, so coming back to your question, uh, Cody is about Timmy. Uh, for those uh, who watch uh, NBA, uh, Timmy actually uh, stands for Tim Duncan. Uh, so the a bit of story, uh, in 1999, I'm about nine years old, eight, eight nine years old. Uh, I was sick. Uh, I don't know the English term, like it's typhus, the Indonesian term, uh, typho. Yeah, I, I don't know the English term for it, but uh, typhus, typhus. Yeah, okay. I was bed rest for uh, 
um, quite a long time. Uh, this is my second Thai first in two years. So I'm only at home and watching television. And in television, there is an NBA final, New York Knicks and San Antonio Spurs. And long uh, story short, San Antonio Spurs won. I admire this person, Tim Duncan. And I grew up even until my time in Colombia until now. I almost never miss a Spurs game. I always watch, except there is an exam. So, and yeah, for me, Tim Duncan is my role model. And that's why we call it other Timmy in IDN Media. It's because I want to have that kind of culture, like selflessness, uh, team above individual. There is no superstar in the team. Uh, it's about professionalism, integrity, discipline. So, and I admire, uh, I know maybe some of you are Knicks fan or Lakers fan, but I'm a diehard San Antonio Spurs fan. It's a small town, but uh, for me, I think that's the, one of the best, if not the best uh, organization. And I learned a lot from that organization and I apply it uh, to IDN Media. It, it is amazing, Winston, how you have blended in your knowledge from your childhood and your time at Colombia and all throughout your prior years into your new role as the leader of a, a, one of a, a major big company in Indonesia. And let me ask you um, a, about a concept that is very well known at the NECR program that is perception, which plays a key role in every negotiation and also in decision-making processes. In your day-to-day -day at IDN Media, um, you deal with a lot of information with a name to democratize information and give a positive impact for millennials and Gen Z. So what has been your experience with perception and the processing of all this information by your company and your beneficiaries? Thank you, Diana, for the question. I think that's a good one. So I think uh, probably it's about self-awareness. I think self-awareness is an underrated characteristic in this world. I think in a world where People, people offer glorify themselves. People focus on a vanity, successful metrics. Uh, they forget to have the humility and self-awareness in making decisions and in, in everything. Uh, sorry, just to check, is my voice clear, Cody? Oh, clear, yeah. okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think self-awareness uh, is, is key and having the humility. Then we, we should have Afterwards, the objective discussion right? uh, and decision-making process. So, for example, with the, all this perception, of course, we, we all have bias, right? But sometimes people forget to reflect and see in themselves or aware of that bias. And then we just make decision and assuming that uh, whatever we know or whatever we speak is the truth. And it may not because every everyone has different background, different point of view, and we should always embrace uh, those diversity. Yeah, so the key, I think, would be um, self-awareness and a high humility. Uh, so in, in IDN, we have a concept, uh, we make it our own. Uh, it's called VOSPM. Uh, v stands for vision, O stands for objective, S system, P is people, and M is the money. Uh, this is how we make decision for every uh, business decision or every any kind of decision. So whatever decision we want to make, we try to think the vision. Vision is the why. Why are we doing this? What is the long-term thinking of why we are doing this? And then O, O is the objective, is the what. What are we trying to achieve? What is the objective? And what is the key metric? So it has to be clear, clearly defined in the beginning. The third one is the S, the system. We call it the how. How are we going to achieve this? So what needs to be implemented? Uh, what kind of SOP? What kind of workflow should we have? And then P, the people, the who. So who are going to execute it? Uh, who are the people inside the team that we should have the buy-in and so on? And the, later, the latest one, the last one is M, is where, where is the money? So it's the capital. Of course, in any decision, we need the capital to make sure that the decision is being done correctly. So implementing this objective uh, decision-making process discipline with discipline 
and having a high self awareness and humility i think is the key to understand our own bias and hopefully we can make uh, the best decision and if i may add in making decision not all decision will be correct i think it's impossible but we always believe making a wrong calculated decision is better than no decision uh, and if we disagree with something i think in an organization we implement disagree and commit uh, for example me and william my partner we often disagree but we try to see uh, who is who is going to make the last call is it me or is it william if it's william if i did not agree with him I will still disagree with I didn't agree with you, but I will commit, I will support 100% because it's his uh, decision and the other way around because it's impossible to have 700 people agreeing to the same thing every day. So we try to implement this disagree with commit, they disagree and commit with discipline and hopefully we can, the organization can, can move forward and make more right decision than wrong decision. Yes. This is fantastic. Thank you for sharing all of this. Um, in the interest of time, I think we're doing pretty good on time, but um, we'll slowly start shifting uh, towards the Q&A session after a few more questions. Um, so if anybody has any more questions, we have a few in the chat, but if anybody else wants to add them in, go ahead. This is a, would be a good time to do so. Um, Winston, you've been involved in a wide range of negotiations. You mentioned at the at the onset that I think you just uh, closed a Series C um, deal with venture, a venture capital firm. You've dealt with, or you've created partnerships with Forbes and with um, Rappler News in, in the Philippines. Um, could you tell us maybe in a few words what your um, most challenging negotiation as a CEO has been so far? Yeah, thank you, Cody. I think probably uh, some of the lessons I still remember until now from eight years ago. Uh, I still remember in the class, uh, the, the emphasis is on the preparation. So I still do the preparation in every of my negotiation. I try to do a lot of research, uh, a lot of, I try to learn from the other company, the other counterparty. So I think I spent a lot of time in my preparation and research. And then uh, I still remember if, if, some of you are still in the program, so they know like uh, the Patna, uh, the best alternative, wah, best alternative to a negotiated uh, uh, agreement. I think, yeah. Oh, so perfect! You got it. <laughs> so, uh, I, I still remember that one, and I have a target. Usually, it's simple. I just do all preparation. I know the target that I want to achieve, and then I I have the Patna. Usually, I just add a few more options. So this is the target, this is the partner, and what are a few points below, and I try to move uh, to, uh, toward uh, the partner, the, but the maximum is the partner. But one, one another thing that a good lesson that I remember is expanding the pie, not fighting over the pie. Uh, I still uphold that principle until now. So whenever, let's say, negotiate with a team member, negotiate with a... Uh, like with venture capital, I try to understand what's in it for them, right? And then, and then, yeah, because uh, we we this this should be a win-win uh, result, right? Because if a negotiation is a win-lose negotiation, then it's not going to be a good good output, right? In the end, people will feel cheated and people will feel betrayed, and it's not good for relationship. And this is a small world. So we always have to maintain reputation and credibility very highly. That's why uh, understanding how to achieve a win-win uh, solution, I think, is, is very important. Uh, for example, maybe I just share with you the last example is our last fundraising round, the Series D round. Uh, probably the toughest among all financing round. Uh, so to put a bit context, we started the process mid last year. Uh, we try to pitch to all VC, so I, I create a spreadsheet. I I wrote all the all the VC's name uh, from the local, uh, from the global, like Tiger Global or Sequoia. I, I try to pitch to all of them. Uh, most get to the due diligence phase, and then uh, just to make the story short, uh, many of them drop after the, the due diligence because of un because of the underwriting uh, reasoning. The reason being because there's not many media company our size in Indonesia, 
And usually for venture capital, they want to have a comparison. Uh, and because we don't have many, I don't want to say competitor, but the reality is there's not many similar players. That's why it's very hard to do all the comparison, right? And then, yeah, uh, it's very difficult. It, after five months, we didn't get any lead investor until uh, late last year, uh, there is a, a, a fund interested in the media. And yeah, it's very quick. Uh, just because I know that their interest is in the media, they specifically want a local media. And, and yeah, and then uh, it got pretty, pretty uh, close pretty quickly. However, uh, the story did not end there. Uh, we got the term sheet, I think, last year, I think Q4 last year, but we just closed, I think, a few days ago, a few weeks ago. So because uh, even in the shareholder agreement, there are many disagreements. Uh, but my, because uh, uh, Diana here is lawyer, so lawyer and lawyer usually try to uh, try to get uh, most of the pie and I, I always tell to, to them, uh, that I, and I tell to the lawyer, to our lawyer as well, I have to be careful so I don't say the wrong thing. Uh, uh, I tell to my lawyer as well, it's okay to let go some of the things that the investor want, like reps and warranties. That's what the investor want. They don't want to invest in bad apple. So we just give it to them, right? But uh, some of the terms that is that we really need, uh, we have to fight for it. Uh, that's why finally we can have a good discussion and in the end everyone is happy because the investor get what they want from the terms and us, we, the company gets what we want like the flexibility, the authority in running the, the business and so on. So yeah, I think preparation, BATNA, expanding the pie and having a win-win mindset. Uh, the, I think I still remember from the book is a Wi-Fi, what's in it for you? Uh, yeah, so I try to, to implement that. Yeah. This is great. It sounds like you have uh, like really taken and it's been almost a decade since we were in a classroom together and it seems like you really remembered a lot of this stuff. Um, uh, Diana, would you do you have another question for uh, Winston or do we want to go to the Q&A portion now? And if you. How's the how's the Wi-Fi looking? I might I might go for us here. Okay, uh, Diana, I think the Wi-Fi connection is a little out. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the next one. And we have a question from the audience here. Um, Winston, how has the pandemic affected the way you conduct business locally? Um, have there been any challenges relating to this with your colleagues? Uh, and have any NECR skills helped you along the way? Yeah, thank you, Cody. Thank you, Amy, for, for the question. So uh, Indonesia first got infected by COVID in March 2020. Uh, then the government asked everyone to work from home. So on March, uh, we decided on March 15 or 16, March 16, 2020, we decided we announced, I announced to everyone in the company, uh, we're going to work from home, right? Uh, however, in the next few days, there is many bad uh, news in the in the in the media. Many companies uh, did a massive layoff. I think uh, I think US also faced the same uh, massive unemployment rate in 2020. And then I can feel the sense of restlessness from the team. So what I did is uh, we we conducted a town town hall. Uh, we use uh, like YouTube live stream, so it's more it's clearer for everyone. And I announced that there will be no uh, layoff. Uh, there will be no uh, cutting salary. Uh, however, we will have for the organization to keep going, we will have to cut some of the costs, let's say the marketing costs and some other costs. And we're going to reassign many of you to another business that is performing. Because some of our business like out of home event uh, did not perform at all, but the other part of the business performed quite well. So we, we reassign everyone. And that specific month, that specific quarter, I still remember we conduct a happiness index inside the company, probably one of the highest until now. And the, the, the turnover is, is actually not, is 
very low uh, in the, in that year as well. So long story short is we believe in uh, focusing on the people, uh, not only the physical health but also the mental health, uh, and creating a psychological safe workplace. I think that helps us a lot in in conducting business or running idea and media. And uh, let me make sure I got your question correctly. Have you been challenges with the colleague? Timmy, any, any yeah i think all of the classes are are very helpful emmy so i think yeah i think almost every every classes are very helpful so uh i, I mean i still remember until now that means it's it's helpful and not only that i am become passionate in this kind of thing so i keep reading this kind of books and how to to improve uh like negotiation, uh, making a, a better working environment. Yeah, so I think it definitely worth it to go to take the program. Yes, and you will meet amazing people like Cody and Diana too. Yes. Um, when, so one additional question. Besides entrepreneurship, where you can shape the culture of your new venture and implement uh, new concepts like the teamy or a more collaborative environment, what other professional activities or areas of business you think are suitable for someone who is considering the NECR program or who just graduated from it? Yeah, thank you, uh, Diana. I think the NECR program can be applied in many industry uh, because many of the stuff, to be honest, it's people say it's common sense, but it's not that common. So. Uh, if you see our alumni, we work in many different industry. Like you work in a law firm, uh, I work in the media, in tech, and many other people work in different businesses. I know some of my friends working in real estate uh, after attending this program. So I don't want to over exaggerate, yeah, because I don't want to become like the main salesperson here, but because this is not a sales pitch, but it's really helpful for every phase of people's life. Because as simple as a conflict resolution, like even right now when I try to resolve conflict with the partner or with the team, I, I use the framework uh, from, from the classes and it, it's very helpful. And that's why I think all jobs, all industry can take a lot of benefit from, from the program. As long as we are committed, yeah, and because in the end, it's about ourselves, right? If we try to do the minimum work just to get graduated, then uh, it's going to be a waste of money. But if we try to really, really want to learn, uh, read more than what the professor asks, and just be very passionate about the program, I think there are, there are many benefits that we can take. Even our personal life, our family. Because, yeah, like even with my wife, now we have less conflict. <laughs> It's, it's interesting. Those, those will become the most important negotiations anyways, right? The, the negotiations yes. that you have with your family members are, are by far the most important. Do we move for this job? Do we, marriage is itself a negotiation, right? So um, that's interesting. But it, we have, a, we have a, an interesting question in the chat, one that's coming actually from Indonesia. And I think it gets to a, a central aspect of of negotiation and conflict resolution, which is trust. Um, how, you have you were running, you are starting a, a media company right now in an era where not only in Indonesia but around the world there is a growing um, distrust in news. Um, how do you build trust in in uh, what you do in the media that you produce in the news that you put out? Um, and what is your vision uh, when you build IDN Media to be a trusted source? Yes, thank you, Cody. So I think trust uh, is very important uh, in everything and trust can be built uh, by consistency, being consistent uh, all the time, right? And for us, uh, if, the, if our media business, right? Uh, starting by the leadership of the, the newsroom, uh, we have to make sure we hire the, the right editor-in-chief, the right editors, make sure they are independent. And so far, 
I think we are uh, not, not no complaint for many people. Uh, but what makes us unique compared to the other media is we are, for example, we are like in between Facebook and New York Times. So New York Times people who write is all journalists. Facebook everyone can write. We are in between. So 50% of our content is are actually user generated content, but we curate through our machine and through our human editor. The goal is decentralized content creation because if not, the content will be only about Jakarta, right? At the capital city. And we want content for Lombok, for Medan, for Kalimantan. So how to create a, con a lot of content and relevant content for the audience. And yeah, by opening our platform like medium.com. So maybe a, a marriage between Facebook, medium.com and New York Times. So there is a journalistic angle, journalistic ethics that we, we comply to. There is a democratization for in the medium.com, let's say the medium.com, and there is the social media, the connecting people from the Facebook side. So I think that's what makes us uh, a bit unique. But again, trust, uh, we just have to show it to them. And and yeah, uh, for example, in last election, we did, did not take any uh uh, election or candidates uh, money from advertising uh, there are offers but we, we did not take it because we believe that let's say yes we can achieve our revenue target but it will destroy all the integrity and the reputation that we have built uh, the past year so yeah we, we have to try to keep showing it to them and earn their trust yes Winston we have several comments on the chat acknowledging yeah. how well you have integrated your, your NECR program. Uh, but here's one good question. Um, can you remember any specific memory where you combined your technical learnings from the NECR program with the Indonesian way or how you culturally adapted these uh, very Western kind of learnings to a more perhaps uh, cultural aware situation thank you thank you it's, it's a it's a good question so uh, i think the basic of every human being are the same uh, we all want to be cared we all want to be heard we all want to be win we all want to to feel win so i think the basic of all uh, human are the same however indonesia has slightly different culture uh, then probably the things that uh, I learned in the program, uh, we are, uh, I don't know what it's called. So we cannot be really straightforward. Uh, being straightforward too much can be can sound too aggressive and people will not want to do business with you. So uh, we have to be going around the bushes quite a lot. Uh, but depends on the people, yeah. I mean, if you uh, meet and have a meeting with a uh, like US grad or people who are a bit Americanized, I think it will be okay uh, to be straightforward. But uh, for most people, we have to win the heart of, we have to win their heart before we win the business or their mind. So winning their heart is the most important thing. Building, uh, I still remember from the class, building rapport. Uh, so building this trust, I think. Is one thing that uh, Indonesians and many maybe Eastern Indonesians or her Eastern Asian uh, really value. So uh, that's why we have to meet the, the team, meet, meet the people, understand who they are personally, and and yeah, just win their heart first before we, we can start uh, win their mind. Yeah, but apart from it, I think uh, it should be the same. Uh, I don't see any major uh, major differences. Uh, yeah. Thank you so That's much. That's a very beautiful concept, winning the heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you should put that in a book sometime. Um, <laughs> so I, this, is, this is really great. Um, one of the things that I know that when uh, Diana and I were, were having some of our meetings before this to, to discuss, um, we were looking at how this, you're really growing a, at a very, very quick pace, but so far it seems to 
have stayed locally to Indonesia, which is, as you mentioned, a very large country with um, with a lot of growth potential over the next several decades, but also with a large population. Um, but just curious, would you ever ex uh, do you ever have any plans to expand to another country or globally at some point? And if so, would you want to give us a sneak peek into where that might take place? Yes. Thank you, Cody. So as of now, not yet, uh, but in the future, uh, definitely yes. I think uh, Indonesia is an amazing opportunity. Uh, I always say to, to everyone, like people say there is an American dream, but there is also now an Indonesian dream too. Because for example, in the tech industry, uh, the market cap uh, when we started in 2014 is around 60 million US dollar. Now it's 60 billion US dollar. So uh, it grew very rapidly. Uh, the internet penetration, I think, has doubled uh, since uh, seven, eight years ago. We are now around 70, 75% internet penetration. And is and we will move the capital city in the next few years. Uh, so there will be more opportunity for Indonesia. Uh, what else? I think there is also the question asked about, about the concentration of Muslims. Yes, we are the biggest uh, Muslim country in the world. I think 87, 88% of Muslims uh, in, in Indonesia. So that will give us more, a lot of opportunity as well. And, and yeah, I think to put it uh, simply, I think we don't have any plan uh, as of now, but in the future, uh, of course, there will be. Uh, but some of my uh, ideas, for example, uh, we just brought a fortune uh, from New York, Fortune magazine. Uh, we brought it to, to Indonesia uh, because I think that's one of my passion uh, uh, about business magazine. So I, yeah, I, I brought it to Indonesia and now it's doing pretty well in Indonesia. So, so yeah, I think uh, right now the focus will be Indonesia first. Yes. This is fantastic. Um, so if we don't have any more questions, we might draw, uh, bring this to a close a little early. Um, it looks like we have a future NECR uh, student here in the in the camera. So hello, um, uh, Dee Dee. Do you have any other questions for for Winston? Um, well, not at this moment. Perhaps in the future we may have uh, opportunity to see how how things have evolved for ID and media. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Winston, um, and thank you, Diana, for joining us today. It was truly a pleasure uh, speaking to both of you. Um, and thank you to everyone who dialed in. Um, the, thank you to the NECR staff. Thank you to Danielle for, for the very warm introductions and congratulations on to everyone from the class of 2022 for your graduation recently. Um, and I'll just pass things over to, to you, Winston, if you have any other closing remarks. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, everyone. I think it's my honor uh, to be here. Very happy to be here. Uh, this is a program uh, that have changed my life. I think it's a life-changing decision uh, back then in 2013. So, yeah, for those who attend this and have not attended the program, I think I strongly encourage uh, as long as you really want it because uh, maybe I just used my earlier quote, uh, this is a program that can help you win the heart of many people. Because if you can win the heart of many people, then you can win the mind and, and you can win basically everything. So I strongly encourage, there is an email from Suzanne. Uh, she didn't brief me anything about convincing you to join the program, but because I really found it very valuable, that's why I strongly encourage uh, you to join the program. Thank you, everyone. I think it's, it's my honor to be here. Yeah. Diana. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, I, I could certainly relate with several of your learnings, Winston, and how you apply to them to your professional and personal lives. Uh, it, it's certainly a life-changing program in all aspects. And although the concepts sometimes may sound a, a, a little abstract, they are very useful in, in all aspects of life. 
whether it's a negotiation, even with your toddler who wants to go to school, regardless of the fact that he still has a flu, um, or whether it's a business negotiation with your partners or you're trying to close a deal, certainly having a win-win mindset changes uh, the, the environment and the results. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone. And uh, Winston, uh, you certainly won our hearts today. So thank you so much for joining us again. Um, and I'll just thank everyone here and let's, let's uh, definitely get together again sometime. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.